The only chance I've got of staying alive is to stay dead. Find out who wants to kill me. And why. You're wasting my time. I don't think Lubinette's dead. Not your department. Your job's to recover stolen goods for this company. I was sent to the inquest. Because you were in the area. There's no body. To those times, there seldom is, asked the Coast Guard. I did. And the lifeboat crew. Pubkeeper thought it was Christmas. Your usual generosity with expenses? Even if they were justified, Burnett's life was insured with this company. Again, not your department. So I bought the beer with my own money. And used up two days of company time? Take it out of my holiday. I may do that. If I'm still here. I don't think Louis Burnett is dead. Why? Punch instinct, training. I know a lot about dead men. The police are satisfied, and you heard the coroner, death by misadventure. Not this one. Read about him. Look where he's been. And I've met him. He's a survivor. With an impressive list of scars, knives, bullet wounds, blunt instruments. <laughs> I suppose that's how you make a great deal of money in a very hard industry. The accident was days ago. If Burnett was alive, he'd have turned up by now. Why? Use the figures. Every year, thousands of men walk out of their front doors and nobody ever sees them again. Not Burnett. No reason. He owned a good, medium-sized company, enjoyed life, and he was accident-prone. If you look at this record over the last two years... I checked his bank account and the credit card people. He had about 30 pounds on him. Now, what's he using for money? Dead men are not notoriously heavy spenders, Alan. And I have lost patience. 
This is a straightforward life insurance transaction. The department employing you is concerned with the recovery, when possible, of stolen goods which we have had the misfortune to insure. You're successful in this. Stick to it. Yes? Would you show him in? Crow! Never listened to anyone. That was his trouble, especially lately. God knows how he lived so long. Morocco, Afghanistan, Alaska, dams, bridges, pipelines, you name it, he built it. He wanted to build everything. He made quite a lot of money out of it. Prosperous enough, yes. Who gets the money, Mr. Reeve? It goes into a family trust. Daughter, stepson. There's some allocation to shareholders, but Burnett owned most of it himself. I'm a director as well as the firm solicitor. I have 5%. I'll benefit, I suppose. If that's the motive behind the question. Mm. Lawyers always do benefit, dead or alive. We'll settle immediately, of course, Matthew. I'll make out the insurance check to the estate. With the usual slice for death duties? What's Crow poking his nose in for? He thinks Burnett's still alive. Rubbish. I've known Lou Burnett for ten years. I liked him. I'll miss him. And I shall want that personal file back. It's entirely my business and absolutely nothing to do with Alan Crow. Oh, thank you. Of you to come, Miss Hayden. Sorry about the short notice. Oh, anyone who works, worked for Lewis Burnett is fairly used to short notice. What's it about? I don't know. I can buy you an expensive lunch, talk to you, even try to cheer you up. Not sell me insurance? So why don't I have any for me? I'd be useless at trying to talk other people into it. Now, let me get you a drink.
Come on, come for a you then. For a bit. Do you leg in here, did you? Uh, around here, yeah. <laughs> Bloody bunch of porcupines running this side to break both your legs. And your arms. Do <laughs> <laughs> you hear about the big gaffer then? Old Burnett. Got himself rode off on the dump truck. Uh, I heard about that, yeah. I've worked three jobs for him now. He'd flog you, but he'd pay you. Hard man. Now he's working out the peace rates up there. <laughs> I hope he shows a profit. <laughs> He'll do that all right. Even the angels are in a good union. <laughs> I'd like to believe you. I'd give a great deal to believe you. I just can't. Street after street of it. All those houses. And down there among all those people, there are 10,000 without names. Yes, but most of them with money. Lou had about 30 pounds on him when he died. No private accounts? None that I know of. What about women? Place to lay his head. Somewhere to borrow enough to get by for a while, quietly. Not that either. I was his secretary for ten years. He was not a womanizer. A fact that I used to regret occasionally. Even after his wife died? Oh, even less then. He was the one who sent the private plane for her. When it crashed, I watched him living out of a bottle for six months. Mr. Crow, you shouldn't be talking to me. You should talk to Matthew Reeve. Mm, I've met him. Big man, lawyer. Uses his own rule books. What about suicide? Oh, no, that would have been giving up. Lou Burnett never gave up in his life. Lives, even, plural. He crammed too much into 40-odd years to wipe it out. Enemies? Oh, yes. Lately, too many. I tried to tell him, but he laughed. But not the sort of enemies who'd want to kill him. I don't understand you, Mr. Crow. You say it isn't your job. Why the curiosity? Well, that's the answer, mostly. Curiosity. Besides, I did a job for him once. Where? Germany. Oh, yeah. He was a shade secretive about that. <laughs> yes, he needed to be. He'd spent 50,000, insured, on design work for a factory estate. And somebody lifted the entire set of costings so they could undercut him when the contract went for tender. I found out which of the competition had organised it and met him over there. And I thought he'd complain, report it, and go through the usual channels, get his papers back officially. <laughs> Instead, he kicked his way into the boardroom, clouded two very tough directors with one of those big executive ashtrays, picked up the costings and left. And I tried to stop him quietly. The German police were a little fussy about assault. And uh, he loosened two of my back teeth. <laughs> then he sent me a crate of whiskey in case they ached. I liked him. I can see that. I know who you are, what you've done. No such word as risk. Oh, yes, there is. It's the only one. At your age, Lou was probably a bit like you. Lots of countries, lots of violence. Too much knowledge. Beats the bridge parties and worrying about the Delphiniums. I have a senior civil servant father who spent his life doing just that. So why? Even your own boss tells you it's none of your business. Mm. Well, as you said, curiosity. And I'm getting more than a little bored with my present boss. It's very good of you to see me, Miss Hayden. I hope we can meet again, socially. I'd like that. If you make inquiries, you'll find out that I am a womanizer. I don't have to make inquiries. Tomorrow evening? Formally. What did you say your name was? I didn't. I don't have one. I'm telling you, you've got the wrong fella. You're not looking for me. I've got a nice little business, uh, and I run it honest. Scrap metal? Let's see your hands. Well, what do you expect? I work in the office now. When I want engines cracked, I take on paddies by the day. Yeah, that's what a man called Pogson told me. Steel fixer. Worked two years in Maracaibo on the rigs. Puggy's on the straight. He sent you? We were chatting about a year ago. He said you'd listen. So tell us a story. Well, at least we can do is listen to the story. More than listen. I'm in a hurry. Tomorrow night I'm going to lift wages from a construction site. That's the night there'll be 35,000 in the safe. I know the wiring, the security setup, the timing. I know the safe and how it cracks. 
Proper fountain of knowledge, aren't Most you? of the time. You need a cracker, then? That's right. You. How much? Five grand for a night's work, all foolproof. And I need a hooligan, same pay, with good eyesight and a clean driving license. And a thick skin. If it's what you do for a living, why be bashful? I'm not bashful. I'm polite. Even to cripples. You were telling us a story. Chain link compound, two private guards. Dogs? Yes. Muzzle? Yes. This particular private army wants to look respectable. Pity I like feeding the doggies. The old fillet steak and the old soothing syrup. Still, no sweat. Ammonia and a quick tap under the throat. Transport? Your own van and a car. I need the van. Just to keep it exclusive afterwards. You did say 35,000. And Pogson did tell me where to find you. What's the name of the firm? Burnett Construction International. You sound as if you know it quite well. I could almost leave her a seat. See you tomorrow. Six o'clock here, with all the gear. That's the list. And we might just leave him there. Along with his receipt. Yeah, that's a thought. Just in case the doggies don't lie down. I'll take that. Go and help your friend. Oh, he'll be all right. And if anybody drops this, there'll be a big bang, only we won't hear it. Did you bring the plastic stuff? And because you said to. God knows what you want it for. through the bar. Touch that and bells ring at police station. Full proof, the man said. Prizes at the dog show. How about the guards? More cake, wandering about, showing come here, Rover, good dog then. Didn't know what hit him. I knew one of them once in the scrubs. Serving right for turning respectable. In a way, perhaps not. Perhaps he just fancied the uniform. Nobody tell me you're a philosophical hooligan. They exist. I can count as well. Yeah, that'll be afterwards. Get outside. Now, Sammy. You won't need that for a minute. Stick.
combination. Use it to get the stuff out. You know, I believe in labour saving. Who the hell are you? I'm a friend of Pogson's. How good is this stuff? It's off the last boat from Dublin. It's good. Aaron Gabra. Get on with it. I taught you to use explosives. A fourth generation Scots quarry man. We blew up half a mountain in Venezuela. It's a hydro station now. Table's all yours. Eleven thousand more or less. We might want a bonus. The deal was ten thousand. There's more than that on the table. And you're holding twenty-five. Greedy. You want to try and get some of it? Tell him, friend. You're the other explosive expert. Tell him what four pounds of plastic will do in this space. Yeah, leave it, Sammy. He's not kidding. The suitcase is loaded. If he pushes that switch, we'll be in pieces. So we leave. Money's no use to him dead. I'm dead already. You want your turn? Don't chance it, Sammy. Keys to the van. You push it, don't I you? I don't push, I organize. Give him the keys. On the desk. What are you doing here? The doctor said you should be in bed for a month. I read the newspapers instead. Somebody snatched wages from a Burnett contract. And we insured it. Surely that's not on your conscience? Too much coincidence. The work of professional criminals. Or an inside job. Possibly. Well planned, certainly. 
Any labourer on that side could have planned it. Only they didn't. Blue Burnett could have done it. How traceable is the money? Not at all. And that's our misfortune again. So who went after me and why? That's obvious. One of your criminal friends who thought you cheated him. No, they deal in money, not corpses. I was sandbagged by a professional, one of the corpse merchants. Only he caught me on the turn, two inches to the right. And I'd have been under flowers. Cuts the spinal column correctly, it's like breaking pencils. Who hired him? I'll see you in a month, Crow. Providing the medical report is satisfactory. I talked to Miss Hayden. She could have talked to anybody. And perhaps that anybody doesn't like the idea that I don't think Lou Burnett's dead. I don't know who you are, and I don't care. I don't even mind talking to a tape recorder from public boxes just so the money keeps arriving. Like you, I'm cautious. Somebody lifted Burnett's wages and there's a 1% chance it wasn't a coincidence. I'm a man who doesn't take a 1% chance. So I'll do something. It's my neck. Good morning, sir. And what might I do for you? I don't know anything about stamps. A man called Sammy Gray said there were bigger pieces of paper you can help with. Gray? Gray? It's a common enough name. What was he like? Uh, large and efficient. Does a double act with a man called Harry Gold. And um, what pieces of paper did you have in mind? Passports. One British, one Swiss, one set of common market identity papers. You're not political, are you? I never touch politicals. There's getting to be far too much of it about. No, I'm not political. Call it um, domestic trouble, other misunderstandings. I shall check with Gray, you know, before I do anything. Good. And I shall require in advance several portraits of the Duke of Wellington. Say a hundred, two hundred of them, depending on the quality you require. Two hundred. I shan't apologise for the expense. The British ones are easy. A birth certificate from someone roughly matching you who doesn't intend to go abroad and will take money for it. Then we change the name. No complaint, no record of loss. Most other nationalities uh, we can steal from airports and then adapt. Mm -hmm. That costs money, of course. One thousand. It would cost a great deal more if people weren't so careless with their hand luggage. Airport thieves aren't really the cream, you know. For common market identity papers, I rely on trustworthy hotel staff. Light-fingered, but reliable. Mm, lots of overhead. Still, we're all in the hands of the subcontractors. <laughs> now we shall need a name for you. Something as far away as possible from your own name. They have these nasty computer things now which work things out. The same with your date of birth, some distance from your own, if you please. It means you have to read two horoscopes, but I'm sure you won't mind that. It doubles your chances of good fortune. And bad. <laughs> I can see you're a man who enjoys his work. Oh, I have to. It's a dying trade and there's no respect for craftsmanship these days. What, even at a thousand a throw? That's sad. Uh... <laughs> My name is Lewis Burnett. Burnett. Two teas? If you can afford it. I've had it a long time. I intend to go on having it. I'm 43 years old. A date of birth? May 17th, 1932. That seems a long time ago. Let's make it uh, 1935. Put it down to vanity. <laughs> I, I was born in India, but uh, I've always liked Ilkley, so that'll do. Ilkley. You can use what you like on the foreign ones. Now, here's um, some photographs. And this is a post office address. I'd like the work sent there as uh, soon as you can. It 
It's a peaceful little place. I took a walking holiday there once. So did somebody who used to work for me. I must say one thing in all professional sincerity. You can create some confusion with the date and place of birth, but I would most strongly advise against using your real name, even if it is a fairly common one. It makes it so much more easy for people to find you. Perhaps I want them to find me. I see. Oh. You don't look very well, Mr. Crow. Oh, I don't feel very well. Overwork, that's your trouble. Runs around a lot, Mr. Crow. Sort of uh, exchange in Mart. <laughs> I've heard about it. Very useful job. We don't know who touched you, Mr. Crow, but don't worry, we will. And somebody will sort him out. That's friendly of you, Harry. Not friendship, Mr. Crow. None of us are fond of strangers, even less when they interfere with your business. Who said it was a stranger? That's the word. You'll get seen to. I'm touched. But that's not what I want to see you about. An acquaintance of a friend of mine said that you two might have been taking a look at the construction business. They pay good wages on those jobs. Yeah, if they're not lifted first. One of your deals? No, this is personal. They say there were three people interested in this construction job. Now, who's the third one? What's his name? Where is he? Come off that. Now, nobody's asking you to shop him. When I find him, I'll talk to him. That's all. No questions, no brass buttons, no not guilty, your honor. Straight. You know me. Dead silence. Well, they say this fella's manners weren't very good. I've got a better reason. I didn't like his counting. Uh, he was probably looking for a passport. He might have left an address. I can make a phone call. That's easy enough. This isn't the fellow who gave you the headache, is it, Mr. Crow? Hmm? No, 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 not this particular headache, no. Yeah. no. I'll get him after too much stout, you know. Something terrible. So we're glad to help. I appreciate it. I'm surprised it's Sammy. I mean, charity and goodwill aren't much in his life. Well, there's some good in all of us. As far as we know you, and uh, this fellow's just another stranger. He didn't look honest. Here today, inside tomorrow. I should uh, try this place, Mr. Crow. Some village full of fresh air with only the sheep to talk to. Thanks, Sammy. I'll do you a favor one day. If you're still in business, I'd watch this one, Mr. Crow. I'm no jelly baby. He was giving me 15 years and two stone, and he had a bad leg, and he still bothered me. I'd watch him. Get going. Not you, Nelson. Not facing me. You keep around at night with a spanner and fix brake linings. How do you find me? You weren't difficult. One phone call saying inland revenue to your old firm. What do you want? Start with who paid for this. Lot. Nobody. I did. It's borrowed. Oh, yeah. Where'd the first payment come from? I saved it. You couldn't save your breath. Oh, Nelson, 
You pushed a load over me for six years. Then you were in hospital, then for 18 months you were my driver. You've seen me operate. Now, tell me. Yeah, I know how you bloody operate. When I was driving, I listened to you, chatting thousands, running people off, buying and selling. It all comes down to money. I know a lot about how you got yours. Look what happened to anyone who got in your way. Look how you started. Not fiddling brakes. I bought my first piece of plant and the money had sweat on it. Now tell me how you went in the business. Tell me! Who paid for this? I said no. The only started arriving. Six thousand. Thousand a month. Didn't know who was sending it. And parcels. Not even registered. So I kept it. What do you expect me to do? Then? Phone calls. Man or woman? I said no. Tape recorder. Then another four thousand. And worth it. What did I ever owe you? Why shouldn't I earn ten grand for ten minutes' work like you did? See, you were supposed to end up dead. So what? So, now it's your turn. What are you going to do? Do you? Nothing. I don't have to. The lads of Port, you can do that for me. And they will. This is the second time in ten days I've been here. All the men I know seem to enjoy views over rooftops. I wonder whatever happened to me and candlelight. I've brought you good news. Everybody should hear good news in sunshine. That's probably why solicitors' offices are so dark. <laughs> Miss Hayden, why have you stayed so long with Burnett Construction? Instead of waiting for my minor stockbroker husband in my detached house in the gin and tonic belt. Something like that. Too dull. And life with Lou Burnett was never dull. Not life. Work with Lou Burnett, Mr. Reed. Well, nobody would have blamed either of you if they'd been both. And blame or not, neither of us would have given a damn. No need to bristle. And you better start calling me Matthew. I've just come from a meeting of the executors of the estate. I've been authorized to tell you that Lou has left company interest to you worth about... Eighty thousand pounds. And a strong recommendation that you should be asked to join the board of directors. Not that I suppose you will. I can get you a good price for the shares. And I can live happily and independently ever afterward. No, thank you, Mr. Reed. I'll take the job, if it's offered. The money might only be borrowed. Wishful thinking. Alan Crowe can be a very persuasive young man, but I've given you credit for more judgment. Lou's dead, Elizabeth. I know. And I wouldn't trust Crow. Hmm. There's another thing. The, the private files. I've been through the office, there's nothing. No trace, no keys, nothing. There are no private files. Are you sure? Well, only in Lou's head. He knew the construction contract system and he used it. The squared councillors, the quiet consultancies, the locked door deals. He used it, but he didn't like it. He used to say the work ought to be good enough on its own. Well, the work was good enough, but to get the jobs, you have to play the system, and what the hell? A lot of it was taxpayers' money. Add the bribes to the building costs. But no private files. No levers for future use around election time. If this is so... And it is. I'm much relieved. So order champagne. A belated funeral libation. Lou liked you too much to leave you anything to trip over. So you won't be disbarred or struck off, or whatever it is they do to lawyers who bend slightly. Oh, there was a phone call for you, sir. Uh, about ten minutes ago. Name of Nelson? Oh, I didn't say so. money you'll ever count, Crow. 
Still the knife? I read about that in the file. Remarkably un-English, I always thought. I learned to use it in some remarkably un-English countries. Yes, that's in the file too. Three woundings, one killing. And four acquittals, all self-defense. Till now. This one might not be so easy. To get away with, I mean. It'll be easier. I'm dead. Beat that for an alibi. You didn't make it very difficult to find you. That puzzles me. It shouldn't. I want to talk to people. You first. Who bought your crow? Nobody. Then why come looking? Why you? When did you go into business on your own account? I haven't. Then why? Oh, hunch, instinct, feeling. Tools of my trade. Money's a better reason. You're an ex-mercenary. You've killed for money before. Yes, and now I'm retired. Indeed you are. You've seen the record, Crow. I can use this. Or you can talk. You choose. Somebody tried to kill me. And I want to know all about it. So tell me about the telephone calls and the tape recorder giving orders and your little friend, Nelson, up the road. Is that the other reason you're here? You're the real expert. Is he next on the list? Mr. Burnett, believe me, there's nothing to tell. I don't know anything. Crow. I can wait about five minutes. I paid good ready cash for this digger, Mr. Nelson. And while it's here, I'm not earning. I like to earn. The longer you chunter, the later it'll be. Let me get on with it. I'm in a bigger hurry than you are. The gate was locked. Where's young George? I laid him off. Look, it'll be ready in an hour. Aye. You mind it is. I'll be in the row book. Drinking somebody else's whiskey. Hello there. Have you got a minute? No. This is a rush job. Pity, since we're both in specialist removal. Not today, mate. Closing shop. Sorry. A bit risky down there, isn't it? Only way to reach it. Let me go on with it, will you? Sure. I can tell you his insurance office history. Eighteen months ago, a ghillie was shot and wounded in Scotland. You were standing next to him. And the deer got away. Then your wife was killed in a private plane. That and crashed. that's the best reason I've got for staying alive. The best reason you've got for talking, Crow. You were supposed to be on that plane. Then the dump truck. Three tries, three failures. And I don't know anything about any of them. And now I'm going to leave. Oh, not your fault, Crow. The file doesn't say I'm left-handed. Now talk! There's no file on me, or you know. It's a standoff, Mr. Burnett. Right, we'd be both go. If you want. If I'd wanted to kill you, I could have locked the door and reached this before you got into the room. If you don't want to kill me, who does, Crow? Well, let's ring your friend Nelson. You said he liked telephones. And then I'll go and talk to him. Three seven four. Three seven four. You know, that grab could get you disqualified for life from any practice mat in the world. So could that, the assassin's gun, but where's the referee? Mr. Nelson, please. That was an ambulance man. Nelson's dead. A loader shovel fell on him. When? About 20 minutes ago. So you're clear on that as well. Unless you got 
friends. I don't. Who do you trust, Mr. Bennett? No, nobody. Just like you. And I've signed on. I need a reason. Boredom. I'm sick of pimping between money, respectability and thieves. Curiosity. Education, even. Not enough, and The night you were borrowing this, I was sandbagged. It was meant to be permanent. Check the hospital, if you like. I will. Besides, it should be well paid. Right. One way or the other. Money or a wreath? Or both? Like Nelson? Little greedy Nelson. Dead. Useless. Mm. A lot of people die uselessly, Mr. Burnett. I started off as a young regular officer. Hussars. Very fashionable. In the 1800s, there was a minor skirmish in a minor war that most history books don't even give a footnote. And half a platoon was killed by cannon fire because some Duke's drunken cousin ordered them to stay behind and load the regimental silver. They still talk about it in the mess on guest nights. They took orders, I don't know. No, nor do I. Perhaps that's what's wrong. I gave Nelson a soft job as my driver after he'd had pneumonia. And he sold me for 10,000. I'd have lent that to him. All because he listened to the chat about the early days, thought it was easy. Yes, most people do. Friends, enemies, whoever. Yeah. You start making enemies the minute you can look after yourself. Not just me, everybody. You think about it, Crow. How many people would kill you if they could get away with it? Or him. Or him. Or her. Anybody. Flip the scrapbook. Look back down your own life. The masks on the faces. Who got bought? Who's next? And how many people get a second chance to find out why? Yes, well, uh, I'd rather find out who. That might be only too easy. I want to know why.